we have Paragon Searching and the Collab Center, which means we're going to go into a little bit more into searching because there's a couple of different ways to search here in Paragon, which you guys know that by now. And then we're going to go into saving one of those searches and setting it up for our contacts. So as you guys know, Paragon does change. It was last year when we added, let me go ahead and take that off there. Last year when we added over here in searching, on the side you will see, so here are the things, the equals or not equal to. That was one of the, the newer fields that we've added. Uh, the date range, this has been here for a bit. I love this one. When you're pulling closed records, and then down here also is one that contains. So you'll have a couple of different ones in here, contains. Uh, so what I like about the contains is you don't have to have the asterisks in here, which was the wild card. card. As long as I had Vine, I could have Saint Vine, Vine Street, uh, South Vine. As long as it has Vine that contains in the name of the street, it will come up. So those are some of the big things. The contains is the big one right there. A lot of the other stuff, I don't use a whole lot. I mean, I could use the mapping and then say municipality, not equal to, maybe I, I don't want to be in the township. Pick St. Clair, like five mile radius, and but just not in East China or China. So something like that, that would be the not equals to. So these are some of the really cool features that I, that were new. So let's go back to our home screen. So remember from our home screen, from our home screen, there are a couple of different ways we can search as well. What am I in my, my center page here? Number one at the very top, we'll just start from top to the bottom. We have a power search, which if you enter in 1960 Vine, so in the power search, I'm generally going to do a partial address. And luckily this is the only one. If you're looking at one, two, three main, I'm sure there's going to be a few of those come up. So this is my old home right here in St. Clair. For those of you who know me, I am up in St. Clair, Michigan. You can either from this spot pick one or the other one. Now, if you're not sure which one you want, simply click on the listings too. And that will open up the spreadsheet view for you. Oh, hey, Judy. No, actually, Judy, it's Paragon Searching and the Collab Center. So I just wanted to go over a few cool things of the searching that we've changed. So we'll get to that in just a few, Joe. All right. So going back to the home dashboard, you know that you also have your quick search over here. But remember, this is not how you set up your clients on the Collab Center. If you're searching over here on the left-hand side, You've got two different things to choose from as far as MLS numbers. Why are there two different MLS numbers here? Remember, when we're data sharing, we are bringing in MLSs from other, or MLS numbers, listings from other MLSs. When we do that, we have to change the number. So the MLS number is the one that you will find here in our MLS. The originating original MLS number comes from like real comp. You'll see if somebody gives you a real comp number, like if they found it off realtor.com or any of those public sites, the original MLS number will display there. And of course, for those of you who are not familiar with the market monitor, you can also find listings here. When you're looking for something new in your market, so I've set this up to be my market here. So I have St. Clair, I know it's shocking. Actually, I use the East China School District, because that's pretty representational of a big area around my home. Either I can pick multiple cities or my school district works for me. One of the other about the market monitor is my. So if I were <laughs> if in a, an active real estate agent, I am a real estate agent, but this is my day job and this is what I do. So I would see all of my listings right here because a lot of times I find agents searching in the in the power search. Oh, you know, I'm going to search for 1960 Vine. I think that's my address. Is it one, two, three? In me, I don't have a memory like that. I can't remember the address. So I would go right over to my info 
and click on either listings or new. And then of course, don't forget people like our brokers out there. If you're looking to see all of the listings in your office, they are simply right here. Anything new in the last seven days, anything coming up to expiring, anything on the hot list. What is the hot list? Any change at all. So that's the really cool piece, whether they've gone to active, depending, back on market, it's all right there. And then any open houses, which we're still not seeing, anything sold in the last seven days, your pendings, and of course your active listings. And then the only difference between office and firm is the fact that say if, if maybe Jody had more than one office, so the office that she sits in would be all the listings here and then any other listings in any other offices she would have in my real source would be under firm. So those are some of the really cool things. And I've got one last cool piece on searching. At the very bottom of the page, you'll see down here, very, very bottom. So there is a little bit more links. I think you guys have a default of two, but I put a couple more right here. I've got the Northern Great Lakes data share. Uh, I've got residential searching, straight to real list, showing time, my saved property searches, and tours and open houses. So if you want to add some more links down here, it's just a quick search. I just, it's a one click instead of a two or three clicks. That's just the way I am. And again, you know, it's that gear on the bottom right. That's how you change any of these boxes around here. So I have mine full. There are a maximum of six and mine are full. So I could take out open house. I can either double click it or select and remove. Now, these are all the items items under the search icon, anything under the listings icon, the CMA icon contacts, you get it. So resources as well. So if I wanted something under my resources icon, like oh, my property inventory links, maybe I'm always using that to share on social media. Just simply add that there. And now we're going to save. So those are a couple of the cool tricks on the searching. How do we get someone set up on the collaboration center? There's two different ways. And it used to be, well, actually, I always used to teach it right from the search icon. I would go into searching, go to residential or whichever one I needed, you know, either one of these. I'm typically in a residential. I would go through and fill out my criteria. There we are. So I go in. I have some people that are that are still newer. Typically, when I'm in here, I am typing and tabbing. I will RE, residential, and I will tab. I will tab again, and then I'm over at equals tab. A for active, so I can either use my mouse or a combination of both. I'm a desk jockey, so I tend to type and tab my way. Don't forget, you also have the magnifying glass on the right-hand side to see what all your available options are. In the all active, you have back on market. You have keep showing a contingency applies, accepting backup offers and coming soon. These are conversations you need to have with your clients so they understand coming soon. And one of the thing about coming soon is one of my agents, who I love, I just love her to death, but unfortunately the, re the report that she was looking at did not have the activation date on there. So when a listing is coming soon, you have to enter when is it gonna be a live listing? And that's that activation date. So she was calling the listing agent, hey, when is this going live, la 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 la. So I put out a quick tip video on how to either change your report view, which I'll, I'll go into that too when we get there. And then also I added it into my spreadsheet. However, if your clients, don't want to see something that's not active yet. Simply uncheck it. If they don't want to see something that they might not get, uncheck it. These are conversations you have with your clients. I'm going to go ahead and keep these in here for now just because. And save. So I can search by map or I can simply put in a municipality. So for me, remember, you can auto fill these. So if I type in St. Clair, usually I just do Claire. 
So I select St. Clair and the township and maybe China. It's East China. I don't want to go as far as China. Okay. So now we have our locations in here. And we do have some really cool mapping stuff too. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my municipalities. What's the easiest way? Over here on the right-hand side is your criteria summary. And here are all my municipalities. I can either A, tap the blue to edit, and it will bring my cursor right there, or B, delete them all, nice and easy. So let's go into the map. So you guys know my office in is in Shelby Township. And that would be generally where my location would come up is Shelby Township. However, I told Paragon, you know, I'm not searching in, in Shelby Township. I search in St. Clair. So in my preferences wizard, there's a spot that says, hey, do you want to change your map location? And I did. I changed it to my home. So you can do that. This is my farming community. So if I simply want to do a five mile radius, up at the very top, miles, type a five, and search the radius. If you tap search, that's gonna go and get the search results. So I just wanna put that radius on the map. Zoom out. So now we see we have a five mile radius around my house. Now I can also add more to the map. I can also say, you know, I don't want to go west of this road here. Geez, Deb, how do you do that? Uh, that's crazy. Let's go ahead and add another map shape on here. So I'm going to draw on the very top. And I'm going to do a polygon that looks kind of easy. So I'm going to go click once and move. This is not a click and drag. And you see, polygon doesn't exactly work because I've missed some of that. So I'm going to escape, not add escape. All right. So I'll just go ahead and delete that one. Edit the rectangle. I'm going to delete it. So now we're going to draw and we are going to do the polygon. That's the one where you can follow those streets down. So this is where I'm going to click once, not a click and drag. I'm going to click once. Go down, click again, and just come out here. I'd sure look, I get it in a nice triangle. So now I've, I've encompassed the area where my client says, look, nothing from here. However, you now have to tell it to say nothing from this area. So let's go in and edit. Now the polygon is what I just did. Remember the X is to delete the map. So we're going to uncheck it. And now it's excluding. So now this is in red and you will get no listings here. So granted, you might want to be within five miles of downtown St. Clair, but oh, yeah, I don't want to go that far out. And of course, you're not going to get any listings in Canada, neither. So remember, we only have active listings in this area. We, we might want a little bit more criteria. So let's go back to the criteria. And that'll be up at the top here. So do we want items that are for sale or for rent or both? I only want items that are for sale. Of course, if I put 200,000 as my minimum, well, then I don't have to tell it I only want items that are for sale. County, municipality, I don't need to do that because I sat satisfied my mapping in the mapping. You know, multiple addresses, if you're looking for something, this is where you can add in multiple addresses, which I've got one of the handouts in the GoToWebinar today. So I do actually have a couple of them. So on the side where your GoToWebinar panel is, the little orange tab, you have four handouts that are there. And those are for the Collab Center, of course, because this is searching and the Collab Center. And then we got searching handout, searching for expireds, and then the Paragon and Showing Time one does show you how to get multiple addresses into your searches, which is kind of cool. There's a couple different ways to do it. It's pretty sweet. Okay. So remember, if you want to get a particular structure style, however, in this market, 
I sincerely doubt you're going to be searching for a particular structure style. And you know, sometimes there's a lot of information in here. Um, and if something is wrong in the MLS, please remember to hit the corrections button. When you're searching, there's a corrections button here at the very top. It sends us a, a message saying, hey, you know, this isn't a condo first floor. This is a condo third floor ranch. Those are the things that help us. Okay, so my buyer does want three bedrooms. Mm, max doesn't really matter. At least two baths. However, remember, what does bathrooms total mean? This is the total amount of bathrooms in the home, which could be half baths, full baths. So this realistically could get you one and a half baths. Those are two bathrooms in the house. You didn't specify full or half. If you need specific, go down to the bottom, tap the little down arrow and scroll down. Down here is your bathrooms full and bathrooms half. So if you must have two full bathrooms, this is where you're going to be entering it. And also, it's funny, one of my one of my gals who has been in Paragon, been searching Paragon for a long time, she was searching for Harsons Island. She knows it's not a city. She knows that the municipality is Clay Township, and she didn't want to do the mapping. She, sometimes you get into the other islands. She said, just want Harsons Island. So, well, it's a male city. Just type in here, Harsons Island. It was down here in the secondary criteria. She's like, ah, I forgot. So don't forget there are some unique pieces down here, like site condo. Yes, no, if this is something you use a lot, you can edit these. You can take it out of the bottom container and stick it into the top container. And that's under the customize fields and containers. And there is one of the handouts is helping you how to, how to customize. Of course, you can always give me a buzz. I'm, I love to just help our members and get these little things fixed like that. Okay, so let's go back up to our bedrooms, bathrooms, basement. Would love a basement. We're going to say yes. We didn't lose any waterfront. I would love it. Remember, fireplace is not a required field. So a lot of times it gets missed. Garage, definitely. I need lots of garages. You know, this is Michigan. We need cars and lawn equipment. So you've got a whole nother garage needed just for outdoor stuff. Feature codes, what are the feature codes for? Everything under the sun. So there's three categories in here. Something that you must have, something that you must not have, and sorry, bad neighbors is still not in here. <laughs> and I, I usually get a chuckle in class, but I can't hear y'all today. <laughs> All right, Ed, can the correction be used if Remind documents are not visible? Yes. A lot of times what I'm seeing in support is your cash is getting stuck, whatever the right verbiage is on that one. So what you want to do is clear the cash out of your internet browser, and sometimes that gets them unstuck. So that's usually, that is one of the fixes that I do see. One of the other problems is just that they don't have them there. So sometimes when you open it up and nothing's there, it means that nothing is there. But not all the time. Good question, Ed, thank you. All right, so our feature codes, because I do have a lot of questions of, hey, how do you search by financing? I need all cash sales. I'm just looking for a cash. That's how you find it in here. Now, as the feature codes come up, you'll see that some of these are geared towards rentals, leases, condos, associations, uh, outbuildings, farms, it really runs the gamut. So appliances well, can be really for everything, for owned or rented. Air cleaner, so, and remember, if you want a humidifier, and you, well, you're never gonna have a must have for a humidifier right now in this market. It is a buyer's market, there's not a lot of inventory, so when you start adding all this want list, you're not going to get much. However, please, 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 as the listing agent, please put all of this stuff in there that you do have it. You want a nice, robust listing because we are sharing data like this across all the MLSs and almost all of the MLSs in Michigan. We're only short a few now. Everything from basement type, cooling system, farm features. 
need a brooding house? <laughs> There's garage types. This stuff is really great in information. And your your financing is here as well, just financial terms. So there's the ones. As And remember, as long as I get one of the ones, so if I'm saying, let's see, either a land contract or a conventional blend or a cash, as long as I get one of these, I'm good to go. So that's how you'll use that. So it might be a cash, but nothing else, or it might be conventional and nothing else. They will come up in the search. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel these out because I don't need any of those. So nothing in there. School district, garage, you get it. I want a two car garage. We did say yes for garage. And maybe we want 2000 square feet. Okay, we're down to 13. That is just fine. So, and I do have, now remember subdivision. Um, in some MLSs, it is a free form field. And in some places, they are not auto populating by the tax records. Sometimes they're copying an old listing which has a, an erroneous subdivision name or a partial of a subdivision name. So searching by subdivision name, that's why contains. So if I'm V Highlands, I know, project three. So I would say anything in Highlands, as long as it contains, maybe I might even drop the S, Highland, because maybe somebody entered it as the Highland when it's Highlands. So that's why contains over here is good. It will help with that. All right, so let's go ahead and search. Now, remember when I had mentioned coming soon listings? I added a column called activation date. And here this one, this went active on 8 8 I can always sort by this as well. So remember to customize. It's simply customize, and these are the fields. And then even if you've gotten to this point and you're like, oh, it was close, but I wanted this, you can simply drag and drop it. It will move it and stick for you. Now, it's not going to change all your reports across the way, but it will change this particular view. So it's not going to change your, your market monitor and other things. So it will change your residential search. Okay, so how do we save this for your clients? You simply tap, tap the save, and we're going to save the search as. Your listing cart is generally when you need one or two listings that you want to save, and that's how you get agent-recommended listings to your clients. So we're going to save the search as. There we go. Now, this is the one thing that if I go through the contacts module, I don't have to make this selection. That's also one way, one reason why I'm starting to lean to start in the contact module. Okay. Beatrice Buyer. And it is 8, 17, 21. That's just how I like to do it. I name and date. That's how I roll. Assigned to a contact. Oh, man. I don't have Beatrice in here just yet. Don't worry about it. You can add your new contact on the fly. And remember, what, do you, what are the three pieces you need? First name, last name, and you got to have an email address if you're going to email them. Let's go to Beatrice. Buyer. And okay. M A I. No. Okay, and save. There you go. Now she's added in as a contact. So you'll saw that green success button come up. Now, next, we want to go to the save and notify because we want to set up notifications for your clients. There we are. Success. Your search has been saved. Very. OK, so what I do like about the modifications in Paragon is now you go right to the search itself, it automatically sets you to the Collab Center. This is the best way to go. This is the most interactive way for your clients to be searching. Okay, so we do wanna set up the settings. Unless you just want everything going to your client immediately and you as well. Those are your default settings. 
unless, unless in your preferences wizard, you set up a long time ago to BCC yourself. So if you, oh, not the other one. So if, oh, there's an underscore in there, that's why. So if you have automatically set it up in your preferences wizard that you wanna BCC yourself on everything, how is this gonna turn out? So this is gonna go to Beatrice and BCC you. So you'll, you're gonna get a, a carbon copy of exactly what she gets. And then you're also gonna get your own agent notification. Uh, so what are your agent notifications for? In your Collab Center Preferences Wizard, you would have set it up to say, hey, I want um, I want to know when my client favorites a listing. I want to know when they reject a listing. Those type things that you want to know in your agent emails. Now, the other thing, if you want to BCC yourself so you know exactly what they know, and maybe you just want to set up your agent notifications as something different. Now, I know this is not generally the way we talk about this, but what I have seen, and I think this is a short term fix, what I have seen is agents say, hey, when I get my agent notification, I want to be able to click on that listing and go to it and open it and see it. I understand. So that would be the reason why you would want to BCC yourself. And then your agent notifications, either A, turn them off, or B, you can set it up to a once a day, letting you know that, hey, they are favoriting a listing, because those are two different notifications there. So I'm gonna set my agent notifications to once a day, and actually it's in my defaults. That's how I have mine set up. Okay, so my default is to notify me at 7 a.m., and I have it going for six months because at the end of six months, I want to make sure to reevaluate to see what's going on. And it's every day, every one day. And OK. So you can do something kind of interesting here. You definitely can. The one last thing, because remember, when we used to send out straightforward emails, we used to have a message body in there. And if you still have a message body in there, it'll still show, hey, if there's any listings you'd like to see, and there's nothing here for me. So, but I can do something like that when I do my agent recommended listings. All right, so what do I have here? I have six months they're gonna be set up on my Collab Center. Your default is one year. What's gonna trigger any price changes, new matches, any comments, and any status changes. So remember, you're only gonna get comments once a day. So tell your clients just to message you, do text messages, whatever, but maybe not through the Collab Center if you're only gonna do the once a day. All right, here is your subject line at the very bottom. Activity notification for your Collaboration Center site, St. Clair area. I like to customize it just a little bit. I know, it's shocking. See, and one thing you can also select on the bottom right, just BCC me. When you notify a spouse or a secondary, it usually works when you go from the contacts module. Love it. All righty. And there you go. And tap OK. One last step you need to do. Okay, does anybody know what my last step I have to do? Send that welcome message. Yes, indeed. Because if they don't get the welcome message, you know, you haven't ushered them into the front door yet. Okay. See, and you know, I do not keep me in a BCC. So, and honestly, I don't need to see the welcome email. But there is one thing I, I do want to see. I want to see what her email looks like. Uh, uh, I think I would like to see that. And where is my preview? I'm sure it's still coming here in just a second. There we are. There's my preview. Just a little second to load today. All right, so here's the importance of having your headshot in here. Remember, when you do set up Club Center, it does need to be a square photo. Otherwise, it will be nice enough to take your rectangular photo and squish it into a square photo for you. That looks really nice. <laughs> I have my cell phone up here. 
All right, so here's the main body that there are 13 matches found. There's undecided. There is also agent picks, which I'm sure we'll have a few minutes to go into today. You can favorite, possible, and reject just like any other site out there. You can communicate with comments. However, remember I did say, if you're setting yourself up on once a day notifications, then um, you're only gonna get notified about comments once a day. They can make their own folders. They can even compare listings. Here is a big piece right here. So I saw a, a comment in tech support not too long ago. He says, hey, my buyers aren't, uh, they aren't getting the collab center. Hmm, well, you know, did they set it up? You, you have to create a password. Like, oh, they don't wanna create a password. Me. Well, you do know that any other site out there, Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, and all the millions of other sites, if you wanna start saving listings and marking them as favorites, you have to set a password. So, you know, it's the smart thing to do. Tell your buyers it's, it's just a password. It's your own account to keep it set for you. <laughs> Okay, and here's one of those customization pieces. Again, I've set up my headshot and my company profile. This is this is in there. So my company did that for me. And then here are some other pieces. If you don't have a Facebook, and this should be business, you don't enter it into your wizard, it's not gonna show. And Google Plus is no longer Google Plus. It is um, Instagram, I think it is. They just haven't changed it in the preview yet. LinkedIn and Twitter. So if you don't add something in those social media links in your collab center preferences wizard, they're not gonna show up. So it's not gonna just be this blank that you send out to your clients. And if you wanted to check to see what they are, you can double check it from here. I checked into Google Plus and I put something different there. It's actually my wines for humanity. It's just something that you know, I put there because that's what I wanted to hold, a space holder there. And they are all right here for you to use or not to use. So I'll close the preview and send. Remember, what are you always gonna make sure to double check? There you go, the big green email sent. You want that that is good. You also have agent recommended listings on the left-hand side. Now you can set these up as well. These you can send just a regular email link or you can send in Collab Center, but it's up to you. So if I wanna set up my agent recommended to be just a little different, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna click into the settings. I am gonna put a message body at the very top. There we are. Uh, I found this one for you. It might be. All righty. So I found this one for you. It might be a little out of your price range or area, but I thought you should see it. So this way they know that you're doing a little, little extra for them. Okay, so that's the message. Everything else is the same, unless you wanna change the immediate. And I would go, I, maybe I'll keep myself on immediate for anything that is agent recommended. And I definitely don't need to see myself on a BCC because I'm the one specifically putting it in there for them. And I would do agent recommended at the bottom. Just making sure to, to let them know, oh, there's an agent recommended one. And you know, and with the with this being such a long title, I might shorten up um, notification for your collab center site, maybe. Who knows? Okay, but don't change it completely. It does clear the can spam act. So that was one of those, those things we don't want to get it lost in there. Okay, so now what we have, now that we've set up those agent recommended listings, what are they for? Okay, so remember we had a five mile search 
in the St. Clair area, but we didn't go west of, it kind of looked like Wadhams or something like that. Maybe I found something just a little north that I really liked. I thought it was really cool. So let's see. So let's go find a listing. Now let's see what's in the market monitor. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go right to the bottom, find the most expensive listing. Try to upsell. <laughs> All right, China Township, East China, China. That's right, because we didn't have anything in the Marysville. Okay, doke. So maybe we'll take this listing right here. So how do you put this in an agent recommended? Is it might already be there? Will it? I didn't put a maximum price. It might be there but I can still put it in the agent recommended. So how do I do that? Save, save to the listing card. Remember these instructions are in your handout. The agent recommended are at the very back of it. Not to me, but to a contact. So if I do contact, it's now going to ask me who, Beatrice, and I'll tab, and then save because I don't have to set up notifications. I already did that two minutes ago when I was there. So normally, if I hadn't set that up for the first time, I'd wanna set it up now. So now anytime I find a listing, maybe I could add them here, It'll, it's the same. Save to the listing cart, to the contact, to Beatrice. Select her and save it. So now those notifications are going to go out to Beatrice here in just a little bit. So I'm going to go back to my contacts, and what I actually want to do is go out of Beatrice Buyer. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and close the whole contacts. I'm going to make sure to refresh contacts, view and manage. Now, one thing I do have, I have my contacts sorted. So I have all my newest, my most active ones at the very top. You'll see I've got the last notified here and last accessed. So I actually sorted it by last accessed. So I know who is actually interacting in this. And it just helps, keeps all my ones that I'm really currently working on right at the top. Okay, so here we have Beatrice Beyer. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight her. Okay, so agent recommended does not show up on this list because this is really just for the undecided, those are the favorites, possibles, and rejects. So that's what I love about the Collab Center. Now know how many favorites they have. So if I'm looking at, this is Lisa. You guys know and love Lisa Harris. I do. She's the one that trained me on the MLS almost nine years ago, wow. So now if I know if Lisa loves these five listings, I'm gonna reach out to Lisa. I'm gonna click on those to open them up. And I'm gonna say, hey, Lisa, you do know. So you know, I see these, I see you have some favorites here over in West Bloomfield and Birmingham. You know, let's go ahead and get some of those scheduled. And Lisa's like, I'd love to. She's like, um, I don't remember which ones those are. That's okay, I have it. I can get all five of your favorites scheduled up. I simply tap them all or make my particular selections. And in the actions, I can now bring these over to showing time. And you'll see the all the available items that you have in that actions. Because that was something that was revised this year as well. So I can put those in a buyer tour, which is kind of cool. I do like that. Or let's bring them over to showing time. And remember from here now, I can make my schedules. So that's one of the great things about having your clients mark those favorites. And now it makes it easier for me, the buyer's agent, to schedule those. Okay, so let's get out of the spreadsheet view. So remember, I just added in 
agent recommended for Beatrice Buyer. So let's go over and view her collab center. Okay. So your agent recommended is your agent picks. They will be here to the right. So everything, remember, is going to be in the updates. There are 15 updates, they're all new for your client. 13 of those are undecided and the two are actually agent picks. So if your client wants to only see one particular search or another, they can do different searches here, which is really cool. If they wanna go see those agent picks, just tap on that. And there they are. If they wanna see it on the map view, they can do that. Might wanna zoom out a little bit on that one. So they can also have a tile view as well and view them all. And what is really cool is on these, you, this is in the, oh, that's right, that was in the coming soon. So I can look at the map, the detail, they can share this as well. And then I can compare these two listings here. So let's go ahead and see those, those additional options for your clients. They can email you or anybody else. They can make a comment to you on this one. They see the associated documents if they are marked as public. They can request a showing. This does not go to showing time. They can share this to Facebook. What does that look like? Oh my gosh, I know. If your client shares it to Facebook, it will be attached to me, not to the listing agent. So it, and it does cover the fair display guidelines because this is my client that is sharing it. So that's just one of those things. All righty, so they can see the associated docs. Let's see if there's something here. Yep. Oh, additional features, oh nice. And then a survey, very cool. So there are, and, and I'm sure you've seen these before, the way that the connect view actually looks. Very sleek, lots of information here for your clients. And they can favorite, possible, or reject. They can also file it to a particular file. It, homes I like with pools. Homes with fences. Market is a favorite. And close. All righty. <laughs> okay. There are also recent sales in the area. Now, I know a lot of agents have said, oh my gosh, that's my job. You know, agents have access to this information everywhere. They do. So what you want to make sure to do is to give your client all the information and be able to talk about it with your clients. So they can go in here and see that this one's a little bigger, a little smaller, or whatever. This one's over on Bartlett in the township. See, remember, this is the mailing address. I know that South Bartlett is in the township. So that's the mailing address. It's one of those things I don't like, but that's okay. Communications, and then any saved folders. Now, the other thing that they do have access to is My Home Wealth. If your client is a homeowner already, unsubscribe, yeah, um, then they can be on here. And it used to be just a Michigan thing, now it's opened up to the state. So if you're actually moving from another state to here, they can enter in their own information even my son just told me, he says, like, yeah, I just opened up that the other day. He says, he says, wow, my home is really appreciating in value. But just like every valuation tool, there will be some that are, wow, spot on, and some that are mm, not so much. It's going to be way short. There's a lot of upgrades that, that you know, nobody really knows about. They don't know what we've been doing on the inside here. Because those are things that you don't have to pull permits for. <laughs> Love it. All right, so that's just a really cool piece. Okay. Last thing is, you know, your buyer can also upload a headshot if they do so choose. And then over on the contact me side, this is something you can help your clients with. So you'll see you have an opportunity to put in a video and I do.
a lot of videos around here, so I wanted to see what it looked like. So I put in that new agent onboarding. Put it right in here, it's on our YouTube channel, a little bit of everywhere. So I just wanted to see what that looked like. There's all my links, and there's the Instagram one. Visit my site, that actually goes to Home Snap. And so and here's what it looks like when a client clicks on that, and this should be the exact home, yep, the exact web address will be homesnap.com, debbie-rand-bajardo. And all you need to do is on your page, go to your profile, which I'll do that in a few minutes for you. So with this, this way, they also have access to your HomeSnap account, because I personally believe that they should both be A, on a search from the MLS, and B, on your HomeSnap app, being able to search for information wherever they want. Because remember, when they're out and about, they're always gonna be searching somewhere, so why aren't they searching on your app? So you know it's everywhere. So I would definitely give them my app, as well as a setup search from the Collab Center. <laughs> and you love the home snap too. Home snap is awesome. Yes, it is. You can do so much with home snap. I tell you, you can promote yourself. It is just um, when it's your listing, it's your attribution. Because remember, there are three levels of service in here. So if I'm just Debbie around the way and I want to look at real estate and I download the home snap app. What I am going to see, if it's Debbie's listing, I'll see Debbie's information. If it's Ed's listing, I'll see Ed's information. If it's Jody's information or her listing, I will see her information because I am not attached to a real estate agent at this time. Now, if Jody were to give this app to her client and say, hey, here's the link, download my app, then all her client would see is Jody everywhere on every single listing so that's what I love and there's no upsell on that to say oh if you want your information displayed you got to pay a little bit more money or wait um, I'm sorry Ed's a, Ed's a fancy schmancy agent and he pays us a lot of money so therefore Ed's gonna be at the top sorry Jody I know it's your listing but um, Ed's paying me more money that's not how this is this is an MLS provided tool and it is your listing your attribution until it is your client then if it's your client it's your branding that's why we love home snap so let's take a peek through oh actually let's finish this piece because i got onto my site uh, there is the about me and how to use this i let mine i deleted half mine in a show in a uh, demonstration the other day so under here you have my links and these are things that you can set up in your preferences wizard for the collab center. So Semco Energy. Uh, if you're coming to this area, you might want Semco Energy. Here's the Chamber of Commerce for my area. DTE Energy, Direct TV. Here's a <coughs> excuse me, here's a video I found a while back. Staging can help you sell. I'm sure it's about a decade old by now. There's my real estate app. National Association of Realtors, check your weather. Blue water area hotspots. So whatever you want right here. Uh, this could also be geared towards your brokerages, title company, your brokerages, fix it company. You got a handyman. This could be your favorite handyman. This could be the guy you always use, the gal you always use for this, that, or the other. This could be your personal references page of referring your clients to your preferred vendors. Kind of cool. Okay. So let's go back and take a peek at our direct communication through the app as well. Yes, indeed, Ed. Uh, in the HomeSnap app, there is really great messaging on there. I absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. So let's go into your preferences. So your preferences, you have a Collab Center preference wizard. So let's go ahead and tap into that and get started. This is where you can also change your name from Deborah to Debbie. <laughs> and I put my I put my middle name in there. That's my maiden name. So I put it there. Display my primary phone number. 
and that is my cell number. Now remember, this is for the agent information. There's your second page is for the office information. And I have a secondary number for me, which is a direct line at the office. If you want to get something added like that, just email me. I will put it into the membership file because you don't have access to that one little spot there. Display my email address. All of this stuff is good. Here's what we need. These are your social media networks. Your Facebook business page, your Twitter, LinkedIn, and your Instagram account. There you go. So my Instagram did go to someplace else. And the, the My Story video link, now ours is on YouTube, so I simply went and copied the link and put it here. So any videos that you put into Paragon, whether it's a, a like an open house type thing or a um, virtual tour, video tour, that has to be uploaded to a site like YouTube. There's YouTube, Vimeo, and I'm sure some other sites. So I use YouTube. Just get the link from there and share it here. And see my agent image is square. And it might be time to update that. It's getting a little old. I think maybe once a decade we should do that. <laughs> okay, so that was one of the big pieces right there. That was your social media. And this is the About Me page, and this is how to use the Collab Center, but it is very intuitive, so they really don't need to read directions. You could just say, hey, you know, I'm your awesome agent, and stick with me forever. Your links. Now, I want to tell you one thing about the links. I didn't just throw a link in here and call it good. Because I wanted to make sure to give it a name. Because remember, um, when you saw it on my client site, it was a name. Because otherwise, it's going to be a link and then a link. And they're going to have to decipher what this is. Homesnap.com, Debbie, whatever. What is this? Um, this is my real estate app. Oh, okay. So that's where when you go in and edit these, so I will go in and modify. So when you're entering it, it's typically, I'm gonna copy this so I don't have to retype it. This is how it is defaulted. Give it the, the link name, the same as the address. So it's a link and a link, and that's horrible. I don't like that. So I'm gonna uncheck it and give it the Blue Water Chamber of Commerce name so they can read and understand it. I don't want to make them decipher my stuff. That's heinous. And don't ask me how many you can put there. I'm sure there's a lot. Your office information, primary, secondary. Do you want to display the office and address? Laura's licensing rules says at least one of those need to be displayed. Now, here was the one. So when you're setting up your client on automatic notifications, you have the opportunity to set yourself up on the agent notifications. So this very top is the agent notifications. So maybe if we went crazy and we wanted to go BCC, okay, so if I'm gonna now BCC myself so I can access those new listings, then I don't really care about new listings or the price changes. I'm only going to get my agent notifications so when they do a favorite, uh, do it. maybe I want to do a possible new comment. And I don't really care about new client searches. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. And those would be mine. So these are mine. Now in the second piece, the client notification options. Of course, I'm going to send them new listings, price changes. Now, status changes. So if they go from active to pending or pending to back on market, my client will get notified of that. And in this hot market, I do choose to send them status changes. So that way they will know, oh, it's pending. Oh, it's pending. Just so they know. I'm never going to send them when there's an initial photo added. That's kind of silly. It's theoretically. A listing should never be put in without a photo, honestly. I'm not going to set my client up on open house notifications. I'm really not going to do that. Tours are for 
agents and then notify on comment added by the agent. Yeah, I'll put that in there too. And next, so those, those are the two big things. That very first page and this page are your big ones. I think the social media one is big. And then the second one or page six on what notifications do I want? Search options, I'm gonna allow everybody to create their own new searches. What classes am I allowing them to search in? Well, why would I even have commercial in here? And home parks, um, maybe I'll pull those out. Now, what statuses? Uh, now, here's one thing, and this is many, many different schools of thought on this one. Why would I let my clients search on expired listings? I wouldn't. Why would I let my clients search on sold listings in here? It's not as if I'm working with rehabbers. So if I were actually working with a huge clientele of rehabbers, I would allow them to do their own sold searches in here because they could do their own comps in a way, you know, it's not too shabby. So these are my selections. And you know what, the next agent may come along and say, wow, Deb, that's dumb as all heck. I, I would do this. I'm like, okay. And that's how we all do it. We all like our own. And there also is the automated automated valuations in there. Easy value, which is a Paragon thing. The Realtors valuation model is from RPR. And then the Zestimate, I'm sure you might know where that's from. And there you go. There is your Collab Center Preferences Wizard. So you go to add your client to the Collab Center. And you're like, um, I just wanna make sure I have everything right. Let's go to the MLS documents link here in the upper right. Now remember, I have access to all the MLSs we vendor, and that's our regional data sharing. That's why it's so fast for us to get listings from eCar, to get listings from Bay County, to get listings from Claire Gladwin, so actually what I want to do is I just want to go down to my real source MLS and here's going to be the folder for us <clears throat> my MIRS which is my real source education I am now up to 87 different cheat sheets in there so let's go ahead and tap into here the majority of them are going to be alphabetical until I add something new like collab center was just added yesterday this is changing this your clients search criteria so now that you set your client up on a notification, they're like, eh, you know, I think I want to change it. Maybe I only want to go three miles out. I'm like, oh, I don't know how to do that. I made a YouTube video the other week, and then I did the cheat sheet. I finally finished it yesterday. Okay, so I'm looking for anything for the Collab Center. So I'm going to go into the search. I don't want collaboration because I call it Collab. So I have four different handouts there's change in the criteria about me page that's just it's the verbiage that's there so here's one for buyers and here's the entire handout let's go ahead and go to the big one so at the very top there's adding a client and you can associate a seller's property so save and add a search set your notifications and then the extras are the agent recommended so remember we did through that, and then this shows you the steps on that. You can also preview listings before your clients see them. We viewed your client's site, and then also customizing the Club Center. So this is the full one here. So now that I've brought this up, associate a seller's property in here. Let's launch this one. Have you set up a seller? on the Collab Center. So it's 70% of voted. I think that's what we're gonna get. Okay, got a big 14%, yes. All righty. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you understand it? You just did it because you did it? Because it was there? So let's see, I think I should go to, let me go over to Miss Audra. waiting for some feedback here but I'm also going to I want to show you Audra's account and don't think that 
anybody can do this. This is just a staff function. So now, if I am Miss Audra's secretary, this is what I have access to do. So I can assume the identity of Audra so I can work on her behalf. Okay, so what I did is I assumed the identity up here. So I assumed the identity of Audra. So now I'm in Audra's account. So you'll see, welcome Audra Jag Jancic, assumed by Debbie. So you'll know whose account you're in. So I'm gonna go into the contacts, view manage, and she has me set up as a seller on one of her vacant lands. We all, I all love to do tests. Debbie Fajardo, there we are. View, matches, love it. So I'm gonna go into mine. Seller activity. There's the 909 Bancroft. It's already been sold. There we go. So these have now been disabled because the property has been sold. However, so you've got a sell side for your client. And you can also do an email report for your client, which lets them know what's going on. And it is a really cool piece. So I would see what the listing is like here. That was the listing. And then if I wanted to view the site, you also have the button right here. Oh, good. Yay. Thank you, Jody. So happy you responded. She says she has entered her homeowners in the collab center on the sell side. She says she loves it. It sends them reports about how many hits they're getting it's wonderful thanks jody i'm going to add that in my you know a little comment before too long okay great so is the listing not showing up anymore because it's sold all right i'm gonna have to put myself into a new <laughs> i'm gonna have to put myself into a new listing of hers <laughs> all right let's see so to do that associate a property so that's the only thing. Select the listing. Does she have listings? Let's see. Sterling Heights in Marysville. As long as she doesn't have somebody else on here, we're good. Okay. There we go. Marysville listing. So now I send update email. Seller's update email has been scheduled for immediate delivery. Thank you. And now on the email report, I want to enable that as well. And that's that's a summary report sent in the mornings. It recaps all activity related. So, and the weekly option is on Thursdays. So isn't that really nice? Pretty sweet. So as you go through the next buttons, it really walks you down all of these. Excellent. All righty. So that is a really cool piece. Debbie Fajardo, let's go view. So one last view and we are good. Let's see. Will the report include showing time info? No, it does not. I'm 99% positive on that one, but I'll get back to you, Ed. Ed, the seller's report, uh, showing time info question okay i'll get back to you on that one just to make sure okay so here at the cross the top you'll see now and you see yes i'm the dork that puts my head my headshot up there <laughs> so here's the buyer activity now there's a tab for seller activity and so that is see and the other home is gone now so you'll see whew, 146 listing views, no broker tours, no open houses. And here's all your information. Wow. Real estate agent views, prospective buyers, and price changes. So it's captured a lot of real estate agents. Oh, 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 look at this, Ed. I am wrong. Oh, I am so excited. I've never been excited to be wrong, but I am. <laughs> We have showing time activity here. I didn't remember this being here. This is awesome. So there are three showings in the last seven days, eight, 
15 total and nine feedback. Wow, that is amazing. Now here's your prospective buyer activity. Nobody marked it as favorite possibles, one rejected. See, this is where you gotta get your clients to use these buttons. You got to use it. So there's your real estate views, prospective buyer views. And did anybody recommend this listing? There you go. Social activity, look at this. Look at all this information. See, Jody already knows the value of this. So at any time I can go into my site and see what's going on with quote my listing. Because it says that I'm the seller on this one. So, so if uh, Audra goes to put her seller on here, <laughs> she better bump me. <laughs> all right, gang. If you have any other classes or any other questions, please throw them out there now. Awesome. Ed loves it too. Sweet. You guys have been great. I love the comments and the feedbacks and you guys have been answering the polls. That's how we keep the online classes interactive because we will get back to in-person classes. However, I told Dave, I said, I want to keep these a simulcast. Because if you don't want to drive down to Shelby Township, like if you're my neighbor up here, do you really want to spend 45 minutes on the road to go to class? Then I want to be able to just log in on a GoToWebinar to the live class. So that's going to be a little further down the road, but we're getting it. It's exciting. And I will have this uploaded to YouTube within a day or so. I forgot to do my lead gen, so that's, that's in the pipeline first. And then always they'll be out on YouTube. I'll share them on Facebook after that as well. All righty. Thank you, everybody. I'm so glad you enjoyed today's class. I certainly have, except for the internet dragon. All right. See you on the next one, gang.